I wanted <laughs> to actually start by asking you about rapamycin, which I know that a lot of people have been um, talking about in the longevity space. It seemed like sure. metformin was the big thing and then rapamycin became the big thing, um, at least in terms of what is popularly referenced on the podcasts and things like that. Yeah. Um, which maybe, you know, there's, there's different strains of the longevity space as well. There's what's popular within kind of consumer information. And then there's what's popular within the, you know, research worlds, which yeah, I, necessarily map. I think you nailed it. Right. I mean, I think both metformin and rapamycin are still actively studied in the, the scientific, uh, realm of, of a geroscience or, or, or longevity science. Um, certainly I think, uh, you know, in terms of what gets, gets out of the scientific world and into the, the podcast scene or the, the, the popular sort of media that, that tends to not really closely track with, I think what, what people who are in the research world are really focused on and, and excited about. Um, I would say that, you know, rapamycin for me personally, I think for a long time has really been, if I had to pick a single drug or intervention that I'm most um, enthusiastic about the, the potential uh, applications in, in people and in companion dogs, as we'll talk about for a long time, it's been rapamycin. I think, um, you know, it's been clear to me that, that that really is the most effective and reproducible drug for increasing lifespan, broadly improving health span in laboratory animals for, for many, many years. Um, I think what we're seeing now is that more people are comfortable talking about rapamycin, um, on, popular podcasts or, or, or in the media. And that has had sort of a follow on effect of it gaining more, more attention. I think part of it is that we're starting to learn a lot more, you know, for a long time, we've known that in laboratory animals, this drug was really very effective at increasing lifespan and health span. We're starting now to get the first hints that there may be some similar kinds of effects in the real world. And I think that's also contributing to, you know, the increase in, I don't really like the word popularity, but um, maybe recognition outside of the, the scientific community, that this is something that's interesting and we should pay attention and we should be studying uh, in greater depth the potential positive impacts that that rapamycin or you know some other uh, similar acting drug might be able to have for for healthy longevity in dogs and potentially in people as well. Rapamycin has a very specific mechanism of action. It is a small molecule that inhibits a protein called mTOR. It turns out that mTOR is actually named after the drug. mTOR stands for mechanistic target of rapamycin. Okay, so rapamycin is a specific inhibitor of mTOR. As far as we know, that's the only thing it does. So it's an extremely biochemically clean drug in that it seems to have one target and only one target within cells. So mTOR is a highly evolutionarily conserved protein. Every animal has mTOR. Every eukaryotic cell that we know of has mTOR. So it's, it's, it's present you know, across a huge evolutionary distance from yeast all the way through to people. Um, so that, and, it's, and its function seems to be also highly conserved. So this is getting to this, this point about you know, what gives us some confidence that rapamycin might work the same way in people or in dogs as it does in mice and flies and worms and yeast. Well, the target of rapamycin works the same way in all of those organisms. So that gives us reason to believe that, you know, some of the effects that we see in the laboratory are very likely to also be shared in the real world in people and in our pets. If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, Please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. 